Hello, folks and goats, and welcome back to the Command Valley for another podcast episode. This time, we got a spicy subject for you all. But uh, first, joining me today is Caleb. Hey, guys. Joining me from across town. Uh, a few quick reminders: this episode and this podcast is sponsored by Game Grid. If you're looking to get any cards for your decks, please head on over to the link in the description box below to their website, where you can input any cards that you need and get it shipped right to your house. And if you want to support our channel directly, head over to Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley to sign up today and get a ton of sweet perks join us on discord and become part of our community which we love we love all of our patrons so the topic for today's podcast is uh one that i have been thinking about a lot recently I'll, we'll say the 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 topic and then i'll preface it by the story that got this topic going in our play group so the topic is about what cards or what type of cards are the cards that will be Commander's Downfall. And this is a a very heavy topic, and it's one that's that's really heavy on my mind too, because Commander is a filthy casual format full of people who wanna play their cards, and I am almost never an advocate of any bans. I mean, if you you know my opinion, I don't like bans. I think all cards should be unbanned, but recently I've had a, a little change of mind specifically to certain cards. Are you talking about The Walking Dead, Griffin? I am not talking about The Walking Dead. We're not talking about The Walking <laughs> Dead. Yeah, I didn't. I don't want to talk about it either. <laughs> so real quick, the story behind this topic. I was in a commander game. This was an over-the-internet commander game on Spell Table, and I was playing against three other opponents, and one of my opponents was playing a Niv-Mizzet deck from Guild of Ravnica. Now, in this game, it was a very fun game, but there came a point where the Niv-Mizzet deck was just going crazy. He was drawing a ton of cards, casting a lot of instants and sorceries, lots of counter spells, and it was it was up to me and my two other opponents to stop him before he took the game, as is typical in a game of Commander. Now, in this scenario, I was the second player to interact or to play after Niv-Mizzet went. So, Niv-Mizzet casted all of his spells, left some mana open, and my teammate at this point, began his turn and proceeded to try to cast a Merciless Eviction, and he was trying to exile all creatures. Um, He had a ton of tokens and and token shenanigans going on. Anyway, as is typical with the Niv-Mizzet deck, he casted a Counterspell, and that was countered. That makes sense. It it was very sad. And then the opponent proceeded to play something else, and I can't remember quite what it was. Uh, I know it was a threat, though. Um, it might have been an O-Stone or something like that, and the Niv-Mizzet player played a Arcane Denial. Now, the important part of this story is that he had four mana, and he used all four of that mana to counter both of my opponent's spells. So, at this point, I'm like, okay, so now it's it's my go. So, beginning my turn, I think I'm all clear. Uh, he has no mana left open, um, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, maybe there could be a Force of Will. There might be a Pact of Negation. Um, so, I've got I've to play around this very carefully. And I remember being very frustrated at that. And I remember being very frustrated that I was like, I have many cards in my hand and many answers to his board, to his board state. But the fact that I had to think about zero mana counter spells uh, to interact with my stuff was a little bit off-putting. Anyway, so I began my turn and I first tried to play a Wrath of God. The Wrath of God was Force of Will, uh, which I thought was Oof. perfectly normal. I expected that, but I was trying to bait out that counter spell so that I could then play a Eugene. Uh, now, at this point, what really frustrated me is that playing that Eugene, um, that spell was also countered with a Fierce Guardianship. Uh, and at that point, he, he took over the game. I had no other responses. I used all of my mana. And 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 he definitely took that game, and it was a good game, but it got me thinking, and it, and it made me feel a little bit off put, because in that turn cycle, he had four mana. He used four of that mana to counter two spells on my opponent's turn, and on my, on my turn, he used zero mana to ca- counter two of my spells. And I remember just being very frustrated with that. A- and it got me thinking about Commander 20 and the the free cycle cards that you can cast if your commander's on the battlefield for free. And that uh, we've talked about this on the podcast before about how it makes you have to think about things that, you, that are completely unpredictable. Um, that, uh, you know, even an obscuring hate, oh, well, we'll talk about those cards later, but anyway, so the, yeah, the, the bottom line of this story is that as I more think about this idea of casting spells for free has been a topic in commander and in magic for a long time, but recently we've seen this effect get stronger and stronger 
and and more and more common in the past two years we've gotten two cycles of free free cards uh, that you can use in commander and, and some of them are better than others but all of them have this this unpredictable effect where even if your opponent is out of mana they can still cast spells they can still interact they can still do stuff and i don't necessarily think that that's bad However, I think that there is a conversation to be made that there comes a point where it, it's no longer a, a game at that point. It's no longer strategy. It's no longer a, a thinking game. Now it's just who, who has those cards in their deck? Who's going to be able to play those cards to counter your spells over and over again? And, and it's, it just doesn't feel good. I'm sure all of you have been in this situation, Caleb. I'm sure you've been in the situation as both the Niv-Mizzet player and not. <laughs> Not specifically Niv Mizzet, but I have definitely played my fair share of free spells over the years. And you would agree that they are exceptionally strong. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a reason that almost all of them that are playable in my cube are in my cube. And I know that this is a commander episode. This is a commander podcast, but I mean, I'm playing all of these cards in my cube and even there people hate them and my cube is pretty strong <laughs> so but get, getting back to just how you felt i feel like when you're playing a game of limited for example and you kind of know what's in the set and you see okay these guys have or this guy that i'm playing against this guy or girl that i'm playing against has two lands on tap they're playing blue they could have a counter spell because that's in the set but when you're playing matt when you're playing commander you and there, these free spells exist, especially from the C20, you have to think, okay, they're completely tapped out, but they have their commander and they're playing all five colors. They have access to at least, at least the five newest spells from the C20 set. Absolutely, and that, that is a lot of thinking that you have to do in your head and thinking that I don't think is honestly very appropriate. I mean, I miss the old days in Magic and, and especially in Limited where you know you tap out and you are you are giving yourself up if the, your opponent has, you know, blue mana open or if they have, you know, mana open to respond where they, they cast a kill spell or whatever. You know that's going to happen. You prepare for that. You set up your, your tricks. You set up your strategy so that they kill something, they counter something so you can play something else or maybe it just blows you out. But you know that that is a possibility. When your opponent has the opportunity to cast something for free, that takes that idea of of planning and playing the game and it turns it into basically a game of chance it's like they could have a yeah. free counter spell but i can't plan around it i can't not play my spells into zero mana just because i'm afraid of this free counter spell or this free exile spell i i just i just yep. have to do it and it just feels really bad when that happens not only once but twice <laughs> yeah in one turn you said you played ugin and wrath of god in one turn right yeah i was playing send triplets i i had a plan i was gonna i was gonna drop wrath of god i knew it was gonna get countered because i planned for at least one free counter spell because gosh dang i have to plan for a free counter spell but then eugene yeah. came out and it got countered as well oh my gosh that just uh it didn't irk me that's 12 mana that you wasted you wasted 12 mana on nothing i i, mean, I essentially got time two walked. cards but it cost you two cards as well yeah i essentially got time walked twice yeah 12 mana <laughs> it's gross so so here's what we're going to talk about we're going to go over four little topics and kind of just mesh this out caleb and i um so first we're going to talk about what commander is as a format um so the rules committee has come out with a description of commander that i think is pretty it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty good if you want to read the full they refer to it as the, the philosophy, philosophy yeah. of Commander. If you want to read so, the Commander philosophy, you can go onto their website and 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 read it, and we can link that in the show notes. Uh, but essentially, the idea is that Commander is a casual game, and you have all these cards from all of Magic that you can play with, and um, there's there's no deck restrictions uh, apart from the ban list, and you just have a lot of fun doing it. And that's the point, is that it's a casual game where you have a lot of fun. This is so important. The philosophy of Commander is so important to the creators of Commander that on their website, they actually ask you to read the philosophy of it before you get into the rules. And on their website, the tab comes even before the rules tab. So this is this is really important to not only the creators of Magic, but I think Magic players in general, what we're about to talk about. And if this is the first time you're hearing about it, that's totally fine. That's why we're, that's partly why we're doing this episode. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you guys know why you play Commander. It's just fun. It's just a nice time where you can hang out with some friends, 
uh, just jam a, a game. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose, but it's a game of strategy that everybody has a good time playing their decks that they've built um, for, for the game. And I love it. That's why it's my favorite format and probably my favorite game in general ever. But the essential idea of the philosophy is that it's casual. It, it's it's not meant to be competitive. Now, this is my, this is, I'm going to preface this. Um, I'm not talking about CEDH. Now, we could do an entire other podcast about how I feel that Commander and Competitive Commander need to be separated into two different formats, because it needs to be, in my opinion. Uh, but as far as it goes, CEDH is a different realm entirely. I'm talking about Commander. I'm talking about the one to eight power levels where you, you just want to you want to play your deck and you want to have fun doing it. And I, I am totally okay with people playing whatever cards they want and doing whatever strategies they want, uh, because it's it, it's just a game and it's just a good time to good time to hang out with your friends yeah absolutely it's like you said the very first thing that it says under the philosophy of commander on their website is commander is for fun and they use words like resonant experience as you play there's a social contract that they talk about and they really like to focus on the format's flavor is what they refer to it as and you can read all about that there but basically it's referring to the spirit of the format which you may have also heard which is just that we like griffin said we are here to have fun absolutely so in that essence now that we know the the spirit of commander and you guys would agree that's why you play commander the things that hurt commander are things that make commander no longer fun even if you are having a good time with your opponents things that that don't feel good and and i mean i've talked i've talked at length about you know things like land destruction when people aren't okay with that i've talked about you know like uh winter orb locks uh, you know, Teferi's protectioning uh, every turn. Things like this that, that are, are not necessarily like bad for the format. Some people don't like them. Some people are fine with them. Uh, but you just check with your play group and, you know, you can decide whether you want to play those. But um, we also have cards that are banned because the commander or the rules committee decided that these cards weren't fun for commander, that they don't make a healthy play experience. And I get that. I get the sentiment of it. I don't agree that anything should be banned apart from free spells. So that, that brings us into what does it mean to get a free spell or what does it, what does a free spell mean? Now we kind of alluded it to earlier, but Caleb, would you run over the past two years? What are the free spells that we've gotten? Just really quickly, we've we've had a lot of free spells in the past, even before the last two years. But as Griffin alluded to, in in the last two years, we've gotten a ton. One of the most famous that pretty much everybody will know from alliances forever ago was Force of Will. That's not from the last two years, but I'll get to my point here. Force of Will normally costs three and two blue, and it's an instant that lets you counter a spell, but... You can pay one life and exile a blue card from your hand rather than paying its mana cost. So in that sense, you just get rid of a blue card from your hand, lose a life, and you get to counter something for free. This is what happened to Griffin when he played his Wrath of God. But in the last two years, starting with Modern Horizons, and this is why I brought up Force of Will, we got Force of Virtue, Force of Negation, Force of Despair, Force of Rage, and Force of Vigor, a set of five new cards that function the same way as force of will but one for each color and they're not all counter spells but they all get you something for free and the second set of cards that we wanted to talk about from the last two years are deadly rollick deflecting swat flawless maneuver obscuring haze and fierce guardianship from the c20 set yeah that's 10 cards in the last two years that are are Apart from Force of Will and Pact of Negation, which are probably the two best well-known free counter spells, uh, these 10 cards, and many of them are extremely powerful, have come out in just the last two years. Now, some of them are definitely better than others. I would say that a Fierce Guardianship countering a spell is better than, you know, a Fog, right? Obscuring Haze is just a free Fog. However, it is still a free Fog. And I talked about this in our set review when we talked about the C20 cards and about now that there is a card like Obscuring Haze out, I have to think about my attacks when my opponent is out of mana, but they're playing green. Now, this is, I, I've, I've alluded to this a little bit in previous videos, but I'll go over it again. 
I don't think that that's healthy for the format. I don't think that's healthy for magic in general, and I don't think it feels good. So it's specifically in this counterspell scenario that we had uh, with the Niv-Mizzet deck, there are other things that can happen. Another experience I had is where I was playing a Riku deck. I had a crap ton of mana because I had a Nyx Blue Mansion out and I casted a Comet Storm um, for X equal to, I think it was 60 for each player. And my opponent, oh my goodness. who was <laughs> tapped out, um, had his commander out, casted a deflecting swat, and retargeted all three of the targets to me and my other two opponents. Now, I, <laughs> it, it was awesome. Ouch. Like, I, will, I won't say it wasn't cool because that was really cool, but it's just something I don't want to have to think about. I don't want to have to think about if my opponent is out of mana. If the game that I have played for a very long time where if your opponent is out of mana, then they have set themselves open and you do this back and forth all the time in Magic, but to have that situation where it's like now, it doesn't matter if your opponent is tapped out of mana. It just is... A, a random chance, there, there are cards that can be cast for free that can affect and even lose you the game on the spot, like a deflecting swat or the free counter spells. Yeah, I think that if I'm going to play a Mardu deck that has creatures in it and it has a commander because I'm playing commander, there's literally no reason why I shouldn't run Deadly Rollick, Deflecting Swat, and Flawless Maneuver. There's just absolutely no reason not to run these cards. And that kind of reminded me, just thinking that way and thinking about that, reminded me of a ban that we recently had, which was Lutri. Not to dig up the past, and that is way in the past, almost. Even though it was only a few months ago, right? But it feels like it was forever ago. But Lutri was banned because he's supposed to go, or he should go, in literally every single Izzet deck, right? Mm -hmm. So why not the same thing with Deadly Rollick, Deflecting Swat, and Flawless Maneuver? I mean, can you think of a single Mardu deck that wouldn't want to run all three of those? Oh, absolutely not. Every blue deck, like every mono blue deck wants a Fierce Guardianship. It's just every <laughs> yeah. blue deck wants a Force of Will, and they all want a Pact of Negation. Caleb made an excellent point. These are auto-includes in a deck, um, and that's already something that doesn't uh, doesn't ring well. I think with most players in Commander, things like Arcane Signets and things like that that are just auto-includes in every Commander deck. Now, you don't have to play them. Um, and you don't have to play these free cards either, um, and that's totally fine. But the, the issue I have with them is not only that Wizards has produced these kind of cards that are very strong and very powerful, but that they plan to keep doing this. These cards are chase cards. Fierce Guardianship, yeah. from the minute that it was revealed, jumped up to $30, and it has just stayed there. Yep. For a while, it was worth way more than the deck. Yeah, it's worth more than the deck, yeah, and I don't know... If they're ever going to reprint it, I mean, Force of Will, it has been reprinted multiple times. It's still over $100. Pact of Negation is still yep. $40, $35, $40. These are expensive cards. Yeah, and one thing that I'm sitting here thinking about as I'm looking at just a list of some other free spells, they, and I think you kind of mentioned this, they have gotten more and more and more powerful. Aside from Force of Will, which we all know is amazing. Uh, other than that... We have so many cycles uh, of free of free cards like Ley Lines and the Chancellors and um, the Trap cards from Zendikar, but those, those aren't even close to as powerful as these C20 cards and the cards from Modern Horizons. So who's to say that in Modern Horizons 2, which I think is supposed to come out in the next two years, or in the next Commander set, or even in Commander Legends, who's to say we're not going to see more of these free spells? We really don't know. And I've I've definitely heard arguments that these cards are conditional, and and that's what makes them you know not incredibly awful to play against because they are conditional. But honestly, the conditions that they've put on these cards are not. I don't think anybody notices it at all. I mean, you have a Force yeah. of Will, and it's like when when are you ever not going to just exile a blue card if you don't have the mana to cast it? You know. I've played flawless maneuver multiple times and i have never put even a single mana into flawless maneuver it's wild it's amazing but um caleb also had a good point so let's look at some of the early um early free spells and see how they've kind of evolved because i i don't have a problem with free spells um if if they aren't if they aren't game changing like, okay, so let me say, for instance, there is a card that came out on Mercadian Masks. It was the same set that came out with Misdirection, which is essentially Force of Will, except you can change the target of spell with a single target, and you don't have to pay life for it. Now, this card is situational, but when you do it, it's incredible, but it's very situational. But if we look at the green one, it's this card called Vine Dryad. 
It's a 1-3 that you can remove a green card in your hand from the game instead of paying its mana cost. It's just a 1-3 with Forest Walk. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> I'm thinking, the second I see that, I'm like, I kind of want to put this in my Otrimi deck now, but it's not going to break my Otrimi deck. No, not at all. And it's Yeah, it's for when my Voltron Otrimi gets removed and I don't have enough mana to play a creature and play Otrimi and put boots on him. If I have Vine Dryad in my hand, then I can get vine dry it out and mutate it yeah, and it's it's i just think it's perfectly fair it's just a one three but then we fast yeah. forward to modern horizons where we opened up a force of vigor which you can <laughs> exile a green card from your hand and you can destroy two target artifacts and or enchantments that is miles the the difference is so vast yeah force of vigor isn't even isn't even close it's not even close to vine dryad it's so exceptionally powerful compared to a 1-3 that you can flash out. So we look at a card called Caven, which is also from Mercadian Masks, the same one as uh, the Vine Dryad, and uh, you can remove a red card in your hand from the game instead of paying its mana cost, and it deals two damage to each creature in each player. Slightly okay. better. It's, it's it's Yeah, it's better. It doesn't kill the Dryad. <laughs> That's a shame. No. However, now we have a, ca or a spell that you can cast for free if you have your commander out that changes targets of spells. And, and as my example with my Riku experience where I just died, that is exceptionally powerful. Yeah. So moving on to the third bullet point. Why is this a problem? Kayla, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot this one at you. Why do you think this is a problem that the the free cards have been increasing in power? And wh why do you think it's a bad thing for the commander format? So I'm going to refer to what the rules committee has put on their website. And this is one of their reasons for banning cards. And it is if a card causes severe resource imbalances. And in my mind, these cards do exactly that. Uh, it's like the, it's like the, it's like the example that you brought up with Ugin and your wrath of God. You paid 12 mana into two spells and got both of them countered for free. I think that's the definition of resource imbalances. Um, moving away from what the rules committee says about why they ban cards, I just, I think that the more of these cards that get put into decks, the less fun it's gonna be. That's what we started this episode off with tonight is that it's supposed to be fun. <laughs> it's supposed to be a fun format, but if literally every starting opening hand that you get has three free spells in it, that it's no longer a game it's a, it's a race and it's just yeah. really hard especially for um i mean we don't really have to talk about budget here but it's very hard for most people to get these cards because they just jump up in price so fast but yeah I, I definitely agree with you caleb when you know you you have a game and you have this this set of rules in, in magic and the set of rules in magic is that you play lands and you play spells and you can have your spells interacted with by playing mana but these rules change over time because they're, they're the power the power creep right it's been pushed to the fact that now we've got spells that we can cast for free and that changes the dynamic of the game i have to think more and in turn get more exhausted about thinking about my opponent's spells now after modern horizons and the c20 cycle I now have to think yeah. about things even when my opponents are tapped out. And that's not fun. That that There's no strategy around that. I play against many, many decks. And many of these decks do not have these free cards in them. And I don't, I don't play this. I don't play the free cards either. Um, I did, I p did play Fierce Guardianship once, and then I immediately took it out. I'm like, this is not. I don't like this. But when I, when I began Magic, it's just this, this back and forth experience, and you know the set of rules. And once you get too tired to think about what your opponent could play, because there's so many options that could just be out for free. So now you're not even looking at their mana. Now you have to look at so many other things that are just. It's just too much. Yeah, I used to think, <laughs> I remember back in the day thinking that Leyline of Anticipation was the most powerful card ever and it was so unfair. This was years and years ago because I, I opened it up and had it in a deck and I got to play it for free a couple of times <laughs> because you can play it for free if it's in your starting hand, M11, so forever ago. 2010, 10 years ago, I got a Ley Line of Anticipation, put it in a deck, and played it for free a couple of times, and was like, holy cow, this is so good. Like, this is, this and, is, the, this is the, pure, the, the tip of magic, right? This is the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Can't get better than this. Yeah. yeah. A, a but, spell that comes out for free on your first turn. 
Yeah, but my, my opponents didn't have to worry about that. In fact, it made me lose more than it helped me win because it's there all game, or at least at the beginning of the game, and I immediately become the target. But again, not to beat a dead horse, and I feel like we might be kind of picking on blue in the counter spells, but it's just not cool in my mind, and it's not fun in my mind the same way that you said to have to be snuffed out, which is a black free spell that does... Um, that destroys target non-black creature if you pay for life and if you control a swamp. Right? That is not a very big downside at all for black players. It's And it's not just the blue cards. It's it's any of these cards. Even though Obscuring Haze is less than a dollar, I mean, I'm surprised that I haven't seen Obscuring Haze in more people's decks, to be honest with you. I have absolutely seen it. And it, it is... I actually played a game last night that had an Obscuring Haze. And luckily, I was already in a good position that it didn't really do anything, but it, it very possibly could have changed the entire course of the game. Even though I had planned, and I keep doing this, I, I see my opponents are tapped out. I'm like, okay, I can do my stuff. I can <laughs> cast this Triumph of the Hordes. I can cast this Finale of Devastation, but, you know, Obscuring Haze that can come out for free. Gosh, I don't know. It's just the more I, the more I think about it, the more I think that this is just a, a bad thing that's happened in Magic. I mean, it's it's here, and I mean, we play these cards, and it's fine. I don't want these cards to be banned. I just think this this method, this this idea of casting free spells that we can see based on evidence from Wizards of the Coast that are getting more and more powerful, and they are printing more into the game. The more of these that get printed into the game, the less commander as a format and as as a game in general is going to be enjoyable and i think that is where the downfall of commander is i think once i mean you can you can have a experience with your play group and say hey don't play land destruction don't play you know winter or blocks and and stacks and you know, many other things that we we talk to our play groups about all the time um but it's very hard to say hey don't play any of these 50 spells <laughs> that are now in magic yep. that are free that is very hard to do in a play group especially when you're feeling awesome because you just opened up force of will in your double masters pack like if i i didn't buy any of double masters but if i did if i'm the guy that goes in and buys just one pack of double masters and opens up force of will you know you know i'm jamming that in my deck immediately it's, it's amazing home. it's incredible and yeah, we, we do kind of dunk on blue because honestly, counter spells are just the, the, the counter spells for free are just, that is the, that's, that's the worst. I think of all the others, free counter spells are the worst and I will, I will die by this, this opinion. Um, <laughs> but it, it brings us to our fourth bullet point, which is the lasting effects of free spells. Now we've kind of talked about it, but Caleb, what do you think we've gotten? We, I mean, we have a, a list of already like 30 35 free spells and like 20 of them are terrible five of them are okay and then 15 of them are great um what do you think are the lasting effects of not only the cards as they are right now but how it will affect magic in the future if they keep printing cards and upping this power level yeah that's a good question um i think there are a lot that we don't always think about there are a lot of old free spells even even the convoke mechanic was insanely good the lasting effects in my personal opinion of how this is right now i mean i've already felt the effects and i'm sure you guys have felt the effects too of what these cards do to the the game experience and how it's changed over time but the lasting effects of continuing to print cards like this and continuing to up this power level of free spells causes you and causes the game itself to kind of deteriorate. It's no longer a game of magic. It's 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 a it's a completely different game because in magic you learn, you you play lands, you cast spells. But once you have 50 amazing cards that can be casted for free on conditions, but normally those conditions are not hard to meet at all, then then it just is slowly chipping and not only commander is a format, but magic is a format. It changes the game, it changes the dynamic of the game and it changes you as a player and how you think about the game. I am already a little bit off put by the change of mind that I have had to make because many commander decks are playing these these free spells. And I, I don't like the way that that affects my decision making because I don't like, you know, casting a Comet Storm when my opponents are tapped out and being like, oh, maybe I don't try to win the game. Maybe I don't try to swing out because there's this opportunity that I could just get blown out from no mana at all. That, that idea, that, that, 
that that philosophy of a card, I believe, is is the road to the commander's destruction. It's the easiest way to put it. I think this this these free spells and the idea that they give not only to new players but to players that have played for a long time like me breaks down the format and i think it it, it really off puts players and i think if wizards keeps printing these cards they're going to lose more players and and the game itself is just gonna it's just gonna take a downward hill turn well yeah i think everything just goes back to the philosophy of the philosophy of commander that the rules committee wrote and i think that the more of these we get the less fun commander is going to be the more of these we get the less of a resonant experience we're going to have as they say we're supposed to have when we play commander the more of these free spells that we get the less we're going to be relying on a social contract that is supposed to make it so that each player is considerate of everybody that's involved in the game and the more of these that we get the less flavorful the less exciting and the less power variance there will be i feel like there's it will be just more and more focused on these overpowered cards and that's not very flavorful it's not very fun for me it breaks everything that commander everything that commander is i agree i don't think the cards that we have right now are in any way destroying commander at the moment but definitely the more of these we get the more commander as a format will will just get uh just get ruined in, in my opinion but now we want to hear from you guys what do you think do you think that these free counter spells or what do you think about these free counter spells how do you think that they affect the game as of right now with what we have and how do you think it's going to affect in the future with more counter spells that are free more spells that are free board wipes changing targets fogging just all of these effects in magic that we normally have to pay pay mana for what do you guys think do you think that it's going to be a detriment to commander or do you think it's totally fine uh we definitely want to hear you guys' opinion this is just our opinion we're not saying this is the end all know all at all um but it's definitely an interesting topic that that can, can get a long way as you can tell by me and caleb already spending you know upwards of half an hour talking about it yeah other than that guys thanks so much for joining in for this podcast episode we appreciate all you guys if you haven't already please like and subscribe check out the other content we have on our channel check out our gameplay series duel of the peaks also if you're interested in joining in the command valley twitch streaming we do it every tuesday at 7 p.m to 9 p.m mountain standard time and we usually do brawl because what the heck it's still there so let's play it yeah don't fall into a mind break trap and uh sign up for our patreon we want more of you there. Join us. Mm, join the Patreon, you will. <laughs> Make sure to check out our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and follow us on Twitch. And we hope to see you guys on the next Deck Tech gameplay and podcast episodes. Thanks, guys. Peace. Have a good one.